TikTok flirting with a big dog. 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 Hey, what's up? It's Tetris with Billboard News, and I'm hanging with Noah Cyrus. I would be ridiculous if I did not start by saying how amazing you look. Thank you Please so much. Please tell me about the inspiration and what you're wearing. Okay, well the dress is LVDF, it's custom made. Gorgeous. Thank you, and then the boots are Balenciaga. Amazing. Every, you know. I just thought about the Lizzo TikTok. Me now. too. Feeling fussy, walking in my Balenciaga's, trying to bring out the fat beard Let's talk about your music. Let's jump right in. You just dropped Ready to Go. If you're ready to go, yeah, make your move. I think it's such a touching song because so many people go through that process of saying, you know what, you go. You, I'm gonna let you do your thing. What made you choose this song as a release? When I was writing it, that's what was happening. It felt like I wasn't receiving what I was giving to the other person. It seemed like the other person maybe wasn't as in it as me anymore. I was super in love. I was super in it. I was the one kind of hoping for it to work out. And, you were 100% you know, in. I was 100% in, and it just felt like, well, if this isn't for you, you're going to be the one that has to walk away because like, I, it's impossible for me to walk away from you. You're holding on. Yeah, and I think both of our self-control was out of <laughs> control at the time. I've been really open about my substance abuse issues that I was facing. When there's two people battling that, it causes a lot of manic behavior changes. And that was also the push and pull. I write about that in Mr. Percocet a bit. Right, I wanted to talk about Mr. Percocet because, you know, to, to touch on drug use in this situation, which by the way, congrats to you for your journey Thank you. and how you've grown with that. Thank but to touch on that is such a heavy thing to write about, especially having a younger fan base. Do you feel like there's a lot of people younger right now that are kind of going through these drug abuse issues? It's obviously in America a huge issue. Everyone I knew was taking downers as a way to party, as a way to cope, as a way to manage. And so for me, I was completely engulfed by it. And so it seemed like there was no escaping it in my lyrics. For me, like my lyrics are the only place for my body to release those feelings and release what I need to say. This is my story and I think it's time that I be open and honest about that. So you named the album The Hardest Part, and I got to take a listen to it. I think it's a beautiful, oh, yeah. beautiful project you have. Thank you. But when you name an album The Hardest Part, and you're talking about what you've been through the last couple years, what was your creative process like? You know, it's funny, because when I think of The Hardest Part, it's like not even in the years the past couple years that I started the drugs, I feel like it's kind of just been the hardest part of my life. And I feel like I've talked so much about my childhood and things I had never really opened out before in my music. And so I, I'm really happy to just be opening up about things, you know, that really you can see deep inside of my world and kind of feelings I've felt as a little girl. Cause I feel like right now, part of my, mental health process and, and recovery with my mental health, I would say is like really nurturing that young kid inside of me because like I think she really needed a lot of comforting and a lot of support. And I think a lot of that little girl comes out through, through the album. Feels like a lifetime just trying to get by while we're dying inside. Because we're talking about TikTok. So I'm sure you've seen okay. a lot of artists have been on TikTok saying, like, hey, my label wants me to make TikToks, so here I am trying to go viral. Like, how do you feel about that as far as being on TikTok and making viral moments in order to help your own career? I could be here all day on this, uh, like, but I'm, I'm, not, me... I'm like, how much time you got? <laughs> let me get comfortable, <laughs> kick my feet up. Um, I understand the business side of it and the marketing side of it, I understand why, and I'll do my part. To me, I find TikTok culture and 
and the trolling side of TikTok, that's what gave me body dysmorphia as an 11 year old girl. I'm not cut out for it. I'm not cut out for the bullying. I think we should use that platform for good and not evil. And I think that that's something that I battle with, with TikTok. Give it up for my favorite person in the entire world, my little sister, Noah Cyrus. And you've spoken about being independent of your family on your music journey. So yeah. how is that to be like in the music industry where everybody obviously recognizes and knows those names, but you're, you're kind of carving your own lane? In the beginning, it was like a little bit aggravating and maybe a little tougher to make my own. I think recently has been, I've seen a big shift in that where I really have kind of become my own and I see it happening each time I either sit down and do an interview or kind of, you know, I've seen it shift and change from different questions being asked that are actually about me and not based towards my family and how they've inspired things. Of course, they've inspired me, but I want to talk about why my music is the way it is. And of course, families inspire each other every day just by living. But, you know, I am my own person. I do make my own music. That has nothing to do with my sisters or my dads or my two brothers or my other sister, Brandy. There's a lot of influence, you know. All, all artists are influenced by other artists. I'm grateful to be in a family where there is so much influence. <laughs> So let's play a game I like to do with every guest that comes okay. in here. It's rapid fire, fill okay. in the blank. I'm All gonna right. say something and you just go right ahead and tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Remember? First thing, it's, there's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. Okay. There's never a right or wrong. Okay. okay, so you'd be shocked to learn I'm a big fan of. I mean, Throat Goat by Kim Petras. Oh my is God, my I'm obsessed song. with Kim Petras. What's my name? I'm the, throat goat. the strangest thing I do before I go on stage is. Literally almost pee my pants. I'm smiling just in case you see. If you could listen to one album on repeat, whose would it be? Your dad's or your sister's? Wow, you guys went there. Um, it's a good one. Come I would, on. I'm going to just say I'm going to choose neither. <laughs> okay. And because that seems problematic, but <laughs> I have had bangers on repeat all bangers. week. Bangers. Oh my God. That album. It has a Britney song on it. I know. Cat, walk, sleep, talk, talk, flirting with, with a big, big dog. dog. Why I need dog. a Billy when dog. I got Billy. Yeah. Me, okay. Speed, you know I got that <laughs> meow. Well, thank you so much for hanging thank out with you. us. Thank really you. I had, had the best time. Yay. Thank you. Noah's album, The Hardest Part, drops this September. And for all the latest in music news, head to Billboard.com.